Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So I did this makeup look today. This is an incredibly in-depth tutorial on a very basic look. I just wanted to really slow down and go through the steps of how I would create a normal makeup look for me on an everyday basis. As well, I went through the full face, everything. I makeup, brows, everything. Sorry about my hair, I just got out of the shower and I've yet to style it, so the whole video it's kind of pulled back and wet and like a nasty bun. But anyway, yeah, if you want to see how I got this makeup look, then please keep watching. Okay, first to start, I'm going to prime and I'm going to use my Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer, the oil-free version. Um, this is pore minimizing. I love this stuff. Um, I have really oily skin as well as really, really large pores. Um, kind of around in my cheek area and on my nose so what I do is I put about that much on my finger and then I kind of go like this to tap it in between my fingers and to get it kind of warmed up and then I kind of press and kind of wipe it wherever I want it and I press and rub it into the skin now if you have really dry skin you might not like this because it will cling to your dry patches if you had super dry skin so if you wanted to use it and you have dry skin I would just suggest going in with a really heavy moisturizer first but um, if you have like fine lines wrinkles pores anything this is gonna fill it in and make it blur so I absolutely love this stuff um, better than the Benefit Professional 100%. I like to let that sit on my face for a while and kind of do its thing and kind of settle into where it needs to settle. And then I like to go in and do my eye makeup. So I am first going to prime to make my eyeshadow last longer. I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. And then I'm going to go in with my MAC Paint Pot, and I have the shade Painterly. I'm also putting that all over my lids. And the reason why I like to use the Urban Decay Primer Potion and the MAC Paint Pot is that the Urban Decay Primer Potion doesn't have a tint in it. Um, it's just kind of clear, but when I put that on, I still have some veininess and some, you know, discoloration on my eyelids that you can see but the MAC Paint Pot pretty much cancels that out. Two Makeup Geek Shadows in Creme Brulee and Peach Smoothie. I hope y'all can see that. These two shades right here. And I'm using that on a Sonia Kashuk number 109 brush. And this is like my favorite, favorite brush for blending. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that in my crease. Create a, um, a, like a nice transition color for the rest of our shadows to blend into and out of, if that makes sense. So basically you don't want to go in with just straight up, you know, most shimmery color in the world. You want to go in with something really neutral, maybe like two or three shades darker than your skin tone, just to kind of carve out that crease and give a little bit more definition to your eye and create that shading. But it's also going to make some of our other colors blend really nicely. And I'm going to do that like, you know, pretty, pretty heavily because this is a very, very important step. And this is always the first thing that I do. It's just really gonna help our other shades blend. I use some of my favorite palettes. These are the, um, this is the Lorac Pro Palette 1. I also have the second one, but the first one is just, I don't know, I just love it. It's got a full shade of, a uh, full row of mattes and a full row of shimmers on the bottom. I just love this palette. This is like my go-to palette when I'm traveling because you can get any kind of look you could possibly want out of this palette. So then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to carve out that crease even more and create even more definition and shadow by putting a darker color kind of on top in that crease area right there. Not going as far up as we took the peach smoothie and the creme brulee shades. We kind of took that pretty far up to the brow bone. We're just gonna put this shade right here. Let me just show you. So I'm gonna take the shade mauve and maybe mix it, mix it a little bit with the taupe from the Lorac Pro palette. And I'm just going to be a little bit more precise with this. Just a little bit more precise, kind of putting it really into that crease instead of kind of above that crease because I've got hooded eyes. But for this shade, we just want to create some more definition. And you want to build that up until you reach your desired pigmentation. And as you can see, I'm kind of focusing this. This is what we call the outer V area of the eye. That's where we want the most darkness to be and we want it to get lighter as we go up and lighter as we go in. 
And basically this brush is going to help you do all of that. It's going to do all of the work for you. So then um, if I feel like my lines are getting a little bit too harsh, I might take a little bit of like a cream or a white shade and kind of blend above where those shades are. Because again, we do not want any harsh lines at all. We want it to be really kind of blown out and smoky and it's going to create a more natural look. You just want to go back and forth until you reach the desired pigmentation. And I'm going to want to take a flat shader brush. Um, this one I got from Target. I believe it's an e.l.f. brush. I've had this since high school. So just any flat shader brush like this. And then I'm going to go into the shade, let's see. I'm going to do the shade Light Bronze. It's kind of a light golden color with a little bit of beige mixed in. And I'm just going to pack that all over mainly towards this inner part of my lid, but I will kind of bring it out. And you want to do this in short motion, so kind of patting and sweeping just a little bit because otherwise this shade will just, it'll just go everywhere. And then to create a little bit more intensity, I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to go into the shade Champagne. I'm just going to tap that right on that inner portion. We're going to work on our um, outer crease a little bit more. So as you can see, the outer portion of the eye and that blending is what takes the longest. But I'm telling you, if you're patient and you just keep blending, keep blending, and keep blending and add and adding pigment slowly but surely instead of just going, like you don't ever want to go straight in with the darkest color. You want to start light and get darker. So that's what I did. So now I'm going to go in with this darker brown shade called Sable. And again, I'm using all, all of these shades are from the Lorac 1 palette. And I'm just going to place this shade right where I want it. So kind of on that outer V and blending it up into that crease. And this brush, all the writing rubbed off. Again, I think this is a Sonia Kashuk brush. So it's just a, a blending brush. Again, it's not as fluffy as the Sonia Kashuk um, 109 one. It's a little bit smaller, but any blending brush will do. So again, I just kind of packed that where I wanted it and then I'm blending it. You'll see the difference in the definition. Again, taking the shade Sable, tapping off the excess. <laughs> So and then you just want to pack this right where you want it. So I'm packing this right on that outer V portion and then sweeping it inwards into the crease. Sorry about my hair, you guys. I just got out of the shower and I'm actually getting ready to go somewhere. So I thought, you know, if I'm going to be putting on my makeup, I might as well turn the camera on. So that's what I did. And I have yet to fix my hair. It's still wet and just in a messy bun. So I'm feeling like that's looking pretty And then at this point, you can really do whatever you want. You can either make it darker, you can add liquid liner, you can, um, you know, you can add sparkle to this inner corner. I think I might go in with, I kind of want a little bit more drama on this inner corner. And I'm just going to take this shade right here called Nude. And I'm just going to take that with my finger and tap that right on the inner portion. I just create a little bit more drama, a little bit more pop to the eye. And 
and you want to make sure that that blends into that outer V color because you don't like again the goal is to not have any harsh lines so and then because I don't want this to be too too harsh I'm gonna go in with this is a Mac um, this is a Mac eye coal in the shade Costa Riche and I'm just going to and this is a really nice brown shade it's kind of a reddish brown shade it's got more of a warm tone in it and I, I'm just gonna smudge this on that upper lash line and it doesn't have to be pretty by any means because we're just gonna go in and smudge it out this is just an easy tutorial something that I would do kind of on an everyday basis when I want a little bit more drama so again I'm just smudging I'm pulling my eye taut which I know is probably bad because it creates wrinkles or whatever that's just what they say but I don't listen to them. <laughs> so again, super, super messy, right? But don't worry, we're gonna go in and blend it out and it'll be fine. If you wanted to do something a little bit more dramatic, you could go in with a black eyeliner. Same technique, just kind of run it along that lash line. And then you'll see in a minute how we go in here and smudge it out. So pretty messy, right? I'm going to take this smudge brush from Sephora and with no product on it, I'm just going to again pull my eye taut and just kind of run over that eyeliner. Keeping close to the lash line. I'm going to take a black liquid liner. This one's from Lorac, and I just like to go in right at the roots of my lashes and just make little dash marks. And you'll see in the end how this just makes your lash line look a lot darker and it's going to make your lashes look a lot thicker. Again, this is not an absolutely necessary step, it's just something. any black liquid liner. This is just the one that came with the palette. I got it in a set that Lorac Pro. I got it in a set around Christmas time and it came with their liquid liner. Okay. So then if you've gotten any fallout or anything, then this is the point we're gonna when you're gonna go in with a makeup remover wipe. Any makeup remover wipe, I, I buy the cheap ones from Marshalls for this because I'm not going to buy like the expensive Neutrogena ones if I'm just using it for this one thing. But see how I've got some fallout? I want to just clean that up. And this also helps in cleaning up your um, the line of your eyeshadow. Like if you want a more crisp line, you can kind of do that by just pulling upwards and it will just clean up your eyeshadow. Again to the other side. So the next thing that I wanna to go to is I wanna leave the eyes for a minute and I wanna to go to my complexion, my face. So the first thing I wanna do is, we've already primed and that's just been sitting and hanging out. So the next thing I wanna do is go in with like a foundation or whatever I choose to use for that day Today I'm going to be using the NYX BB Cream. It's um, It says Brightens, Smooths, Moisturizes. It's oil-free and mineral-enriched. And I have in the shade Golden, um, BBCR03 Golden. My skin, I'm trying to give it a break. I don't, you know... I know you probably think that I put makeup like this on every day, but I really, really don't. I actually don't like putting products on my skin. I like to let them... Um, I like to let my skin breathe, so whenever I really don't feel like putting makeup on or I want to let my skin breathe, I pretty much put on a very light layer of this uh, BB cream. And I'm kind of pressing that into the skin, and this is a Real Techniques buffing brush. I love these Real Techniques brushes. They're amazing quality, and they're like under $10. And you always want to bring that down to your neck and kind of run it along your ear.
and I just squeezed some of that onto the back of my hand and then dipped my brush in and I'm just like I didn't bring that up under here because that's where we're gonna put concealer and I don't want too much product to go under there. Go in with concealer and typically I would use my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer because this is the best concealer I've ever used ever. It's really really pigmented, a little bit goes a long way but today since I'm I really want to leave my skin kind of natural and I don't want to cake too much products on there I'm going to use a little bit of a lighter formula. This is a great one though but today since I'm not really doing crazy smoky eye, I'm not going out, I'm not, I don't need it to last for like eight hours or longer. So I'm just going to go in with, I'm going to use the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer from the drugstore. I really like this. I'm in the shade, this is in the shade 10 Light. Yeah, 10 Light. And this is a really light formula of concealer. And the reason I'm using a light shade, even though I'm fairly tan, is because I want to highlight underneath my eye and I want to brighten it up. Sometimes I might even go down the center of the nose, on the forehead, cupid's bow, and on my chin. Just to even out that highlight, because I don't want the only place on my face that's highlighted to be under my eyes, like wham bam in your face. So. Basically, this is just going to highlight and bring those features forward and give more dimension to my face. And I'm using a Up and Up foundation brush from Target. They actually have some pretty good brushes. I like this one for my concealer because it's kind of that rounded, tapered. And again, pressing and kind of patting into the skin. And I might take my finger. A lot of times the warmth of your finger does the trick. Like, you notice with the primer, you know, I didn't, I typically put primer on my fingers because it just helps it melt into the skin more. So a lot of times I'll blend things in with a brush, but then I'll always run it over with my finger just to make sure it's actually really melted into my skin really nicely. And immediately you're going to want to set that just so it doesn't crease. And I'm going to set it using my Sigma Tapered Highlighter Brush, my F35, and my MAC Pro Powder and Emphasize, and mixing that with the Anastasia Banana Powder from the Anastasia Contour Kit. And this is just going to help everything stay in place and not crease. Okay, and then I'm going to want to set the rest of my face. And depending on what kind of skin you have, you might want to skip this step. But since I have oily skin and this will just all slide off, I always want to set it with a powder. And again, I'm using my, surprise, surprise, my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light and my Sephora Pro Precision Powder Brush number 59. Now, if you have dry skin or more mature skin, you may just want to skip this step. But... You know, I've got to, otherwise I will regret, you know, not doing it. What? That don't make sense. Okay. So I'm just taking that Costa Riche eye coal and I'm running it, not all the way in, but kind of like where my iris stops, if that makes sense. I think that's called your iris. Okay, and then so to blend that, I'm going to take a Real Techniques, this is a shading brush in their um, eyeshadow shading kit, and it's just a, a smaller fluffy brush, and again, I'm just going to, with no extra product on it, if you wanted something a little bit more smoky, you could dip into like that taupe eyeshadow or that sable eyeshadow that we used on our upper lid. But again, we're just kind of going pretty normal today, so this does, this brush doesn't have any product on it. To highlight the inner corners and my brow bone with a matte shade, so I'm using this white from the Lorac One palette and this flat shading brush I got from Target. I just like to run that under the brow bone and on the inner corner. 
it just brightens up your whole face, I feel like. And it makes your brows look a lot more shapely and arched. Next, I want to add some color back into my face. So for that, I'm going to use my NYX HD blush in taupe. And I hauled this recently in my Ulta haul. Um, and just to give you an update on how I like it, it's good. I really like the color. It is just so powdery, like so powdery. Like I dip my brush in and just powder goes everywhere, like everywhere. So you kind of have to be really careful. And I'm going to be contouring with this Real Techniques contour brush. I'm going to suck my cheeks in and kind of go right under where my cheekbone is, starting at the top of my ear and not going past the outside of my eye, if that makes sense. <laughs> So, right there. And you want very little product on your brush when you're doing this because you don't want like a stark line. You just want everything to look blended and natural. And then we're gonna contour that forehead a little bit to make that look smaller. Tapping off the excess. And then I'm going to run a little bit of this just under my jawbone to contour there as well. I'll make my chin look a little bit smaller. And then sometimes I like to tie in the color and the shading just by running down this down the sides of my nose and like that just to kind of slim out the nose a little bit. Make everything look smaller. This is the Extra Dimension Blush in At Dusk um, from MAC. I got this at a CCO and I'm using a... Um, up and up blush brush and for blush I'm just going kind of above where I put that contour and blending backwards I don't really like putting blush on my cheeks um, that looks flattering on some people but it just does not look that great on me and then to add a little bit more drama I'm going to highlight and I'm using my Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick in the shade beige with a Real Techniques setting brush and I'm just going to go on the tops of the cheekbones kind of bring it around just to give that subtle highlight okay now to finish off the eyes I'm going to do uh, mascara and I'm going to be curling my lashes with the Tarte eyelash curler And I have to do this because my lashes just stick straight down and I have to curl them for so long. It is so annoying, but you know what? Whatever. That's also why I have to use waterproof. Otherwise, my lashes will just fall straight down. But whatever ingredient they have in waterproof mascara keeps your lashes curled. So that's a tip. If you find your lashes don't stay curled, use waterproof. Okay. And I'm going to use my L'Oreal Telescopic Shocking Extensions in waterproof. Surprise, surprise. This is my favorite mascara of life. And I'm not going to put on lashes just because that's not what I would do on an everyday basis. But I've, I've, bleh. if I were going out, then yes, I would put lashes on. But I'm just going to a dinner in the neighborhood. I'm going to tight line using my L'Oreal Voluminous Molding Eye Coal. And this is just going to make your lashes. I mean, I don't know if you can tell the difference on camera, but in person, from this side to this side, these la upper lashes just look thicker and more voluminous than this side because you can't see that, that skin peeking through. 
it makes a difference to me. You can leave it out if you don't think you need it and you have awesome lashes, but I hate my lashes. They're terrible. So I find this really makes a difference. Alrighty. And then, because I'm high maintenance, I have a different mascara for my bottom lashes. This is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. It's got that super tiny wand. I find that even though I use waterproof, my lashes on the bottom still would smudge onto my concealer. This mascara doesn't claim to be waterproof. This mascara doesn't claim to be waterproof, but whatever they've put in it, it does not smudge on my concealer at all. I stinking love this. I know it's high maintenance to have two different mascaras, but you know what? YOLO. Now let's move on to brows, and I'm going to be using my NYX brow, NYX micro brow pencil in the shade Chocolate. Usually I would use my Anastasia Brow Wiz, but I ran out of that, and since I have, since I just bought this, I'm not going to go out and buy that because I want to, I want to give this a good go to see if it really is a dupe for the Anastasia and so far it's really good. I really like it. I can't tell the difference between this one and the Anastasia one. I actually think I might like this one better. Sorry, but you know what? $10 to $21. I'm definitely going to go with the $10 one. YSL Volupe's Tension Oil, and this is in the shade number 5. I love this stuff, you guys. It, it is what it says it is. It's a tint in oil. So it's an oil, so it's really moisturizing, but it just tints your lips. And it, depending on what, um, you know, what color your lips are, kind of depends on how much it develops. It's really hard to talk and put lipstick on at the same time. I should probably stop talking. And I know I used this in the tutorial I posted yesterday. But I just love this stuff. It is expensive because it is YSL. But 